All right, perfect. Uh, then we can use that to very bluntly segue to the topics that I asked Liquid Swan to have a think about. So, Liquid, how is it going up in the fascist provinces of Canada? Well, I'm on the west coast, so it's a little bit more lax. Uh, people generally follow the rules anyways, but um, there's a lot of reluctance. There's been a lot of protests lately. That the protests in Canada are very minor. Like You just have a bunch of uh, um, the people that have the most amount of time on their hands that go out and do it. So, you know, um, stay-at-home moms, uh, a bunch of other stuff like that. But, but for the most part on the West Coast, it's been pretty chill. They just don't want us to move around to the different health uh, zones. So if you're on, say, Vancouver Island, they don't want you going over to the mainland, uh, British Columbia, to kind of um, camp and stuff. But you can still go there if you need surgeries and all this stuff. I mean, I, I don't like it. I think it's kind of lame. I don't do a lot of traveling anyways. I usually just, you know, stay at home with my kids, go to parks and work. But on the east side of Canada, it's been, like, authoritarian. you got, like, people busting into your house, counting how many heads are in your room, being like, well, you have six people here. You're only allowed to have four, you know. And uh, generally, it's just been kind of hell. There's this news organization called The Rebel. It's generally generally derided by the left and it's, uh, and by mainstream. Um, they refused public funding, uh, unlike all the other news organizations. But they have been funding fights against fines that people have been getting for COVID. So uh, I think the most recent one, uh, there's been some pastors in Alberta. So that's, that's east of us. And, oh, uh, based in Alberta, the, yeah, no, the Alberta, land Alberta. of the prophet. Yeah, Alberta is run by the Conservative Party, and for some reason they still been shut. They've been like going into rural churches and like shutting them down and arresting pastors and uh, putting double layers of fences around them and uh, installing brigades of RCMP there, so that's our federal police, and preventing people from going and worshiping or whatever. Now, I'm not religious, really, myself, so I don't go to churches, but I think it's we have a right in Canada to uh, practice your religion. And well, you this used has been to. like. Sorry? You used to. Yeah, we were supposed to. We're, we supposedly have this right. But there's also this clause in our constitution that says they can just get rid of all our rights for short periods of time of up to five years. And uh, so they're, but they haven't put that. But they haven't put that in yet. So they're actually violating even that, you know. It's called the, uh, the not Notwithstanding Clause. So people think Canada is like a democracy and stuff. We're actually a monarchy uh, that has a parliamentary government. So uh, unless the democracy stands, unless the de democracy part stands up against or for the rights, the rights essentially don't exist. So it has to be continually uh, pushed. Now, the court can try to rectify that later. But in the meantime, we all just kind of have to suffer with uh, let's call it the pseudo-dictatorship of Justin Trudeau and the, the premiers, which are sort of like the governors. I, I think I heard about this, like the monarchy of Canada. I think I heard about like a Canadian royal like wedding ceremony where like the two people getting married like go up to like, uh, like a bowl of pudding while people queef and then they stick their arms in it, wipe the pudding off, and then like the man rips the wife's arm off, as is tradition. Yeah, so, yeah, the South Park version. Yeah, <laughs> if it was like that, we'd probably have more rights, but... Yeah, the original name for... The current... Do you know the, the name for Canada right now is the Dominion of Canada? And it should be the Kingdom of Canada, but we were afraid that that would make the states nervous, so we called it the Dominion. But Dominion just means Kingdom, essentially, anyways. And it so, sounds cooler, too. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have a democracy up here. We have, like, a... We have, like, a bureaucracy. Well, I also remember, um, isn't, wait, I, now I could be completely wrong about this, but aren't the senators, like, appointed by the prime minister? Yeah, the prime minister gets to, yeah, the senate is like a, um, it's like a place where you get to go if you've done, if you've been a good boy and you've done what the prime minister wants, um, or if you're, like, a really famous person that they want to give more prestige to the senate to, they'll, they'll appoint you as a senator to make the assembly look good. But the yeah, Senate's not wait, elected. Yeah, is Jesus, there, is there an elected? Australia had it stupid, but damn. Is there an elected legislative body in Canada? Yes, the, they have the House of Commons, so it's first past okay. the House, just like the states. But um, so, anyways, the the leader of the party becomes the prime minister, 
uh, the leader of the party, uh, who has the most seats, uh, becomes the prime minister. Um, normally, it's kind of like England, I guess, but there's no House of Lords. There's just this house of uh, jerk offs in the Senate that don't do anything. See that that just sounds awful to me. Like the prime minister, like appointing the senators. Like what the hell? Oh, and there's a, I don't think there's a limit. You could there's you're supposed there's supposed to be 105 senators, but I think you can technically just keep appointing more um, by just changing the the law. And, uh, well, for example, yeah. like, B BC gets six senators, right? And BC has, like, five million people in it, roughly, or something like that. And Prince Edward Island gets six. And they have, like, Prince Edward Island's tiny. It's, like, the size of Rhode Island or whatever. And uh, they have, like, 100,000 people, and they get six senators as well. So it's not really, it doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> that, one? Oh, that just seems kind of... <laughs> Fuck. There, there, there's one thing I'm wondering, Swan. Uh... Yep. If the security people came into uh, the office of uh, Justin Trudeau and just, you know, for, were for arresting him for uh, one of his things, would he just be like, I am Canada? Oh, no, he'd, he'd be screwed. Someone would have backstabbed him, though. He, would have seen, he, he wouldn't have seen it coming. Because he would have probably tried okay. to get the other guy out first. So he can't do a Chad Palpatine on that one. Unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> fortunately, and uh, I guess for him, <laughs> and unfortunately for uh, the rest of us. So more like a Bib Fortuna chat. Boba <laughs> Fett comes in and just wipes it out, huh? <laughs> oh, sorry, Bib Fortuna? Uh, that uh, Twi'lek guy from Jabba the Hutt's palace. He got really fat oh. in Mandalorian and got his head caved in. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, basically. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but other than that, the climate's been pretty okay. We've been having a lot of inflation, and that's been causing a bit of nerves here. Our housing market's ridiculous. Like, um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's usually pretty high in big cities, but even in small towns here, you're looking at like four hundred and fifty to five hundred fifty thousand for like a two bedroom house, and uh, in cities you're looking at like um, between seven fifty and a million uh, just for like a starter home. <clears throat> And that's Canadian box, right? But that actually sounds kind of similar to the abysmal state of the property market over here in Australia. Yeah, we we got lots of uh, foreigners that buy places and then just um, not they don't even live in there except for like two weeks a year. Hmm. But it's because it's safe, right? Like here, it's a safe country, so I don't know, maybe we just need to go through a little bit of chaos when we get the because we got these leftist politicians right now. Um, and they're putting in all these policies that basically let people get away with crime. And uh, the local people are afraid of saying anything because they think they, they're afraid of being called racist or whatever. But I mean, Oh, no, not racist. It's like, I know, it's so fucking pathetic. I mean, <laughs> anyone just being like, I, I don't want to be called racist, so I'm just going to let stupid shit happen. They lose... All kind of respect. All of it. I'm, I can't even look at them like people anymore. Well, what people seem to forget around the world, too, is like, even though Trudeau's the prime minister, he didn't get the most votes last election. He just has the most strategic positioning, and um, his votes are concentrated properly across the board. And so the conservatives that didn't get enough uh, to win. I don't even vote conservative. I, I vote for uh, PPC. Um, this is the People's Party of Canada with Maxime Bernier. Um, <clears throat> he's more of a Peterson alkalite. I think that's the reason why he broke away. He almost yes, won that election yes. when, he went, when he ran for conservative leader, but he lost by like, it was like 49 to 51%. Then all the ballots were erased. Uh huh, of course. <laughs> it, was it was fortified. fortified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fortified against him. Almost like in America. I'm sorry, I mean, it was a totally beep, beep, boop YouTube. Yes, the Associated Press has confirmed that he legitimately lost the conservative leadership election. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah, but before I have to bounce, can we get to the uh, cancel culture topic? <laughs> and comedians. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, cancel culture. The comedians are revolting. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I just want to, like, I just kind of want to say that there's something that's been bothering me about cancel culture recently, which is that 
you know, the left's defense of cancel culture is always, oh, well, it's just consequences for words and actions. You know, obviously, people's actions have consequences. You can't be against that. And it's kind of like, well, in a sense, it's how I would compare, um, say, witch hunts uh, to... Uh, to an actual legal proceeding with the standards of the modern American court, let's say. Or at least what the standards should be, not what they were in the case of the Chauvin trial, for example. But uh, kind of the problem with cancel culture, uh, you know, with critical race theory saying that everything is racist, and with Vosh um, using inductive reasoning to, uh, to discern that conservatives really just hate black people. But the problem with like all of those things is the, I guess, absence of the presumption of innocence. You know, I'm not against there being social consequences for people's behavior or like people uh, doing the wrong thing. I, in fact, I think social consequences are a necessary part of our of our cultural ethos and, and our and our discourse, but. Social consequences, like legal consequences, should be metered out, metered out in such ways to pre protect the innocent. So there should be kind of a baseline assumption of innocent until proven guilty, or a general good faith charitability given to the opponent. It's like, well, are they actually saying this? Do they actually believe this? And if they do, are they badly motivated, or do they have sincere moral convictions that bring them here? And I think it is that lack of good faith and charity that is the problem with a lot of this cancel culture shit, you know? I think there could be social consequences for um, certain actions, but there is an eagerness to impose them and a lack of charity, charitability to the people they're imposed on that the whole system just gets completely autistic. Like, it would be like arguing in favor of, of the Salem witch trials by saying, oh, well, do you think it's a bad thing that we have a court system? No, I think an actual court system is healthy, but what this is is just vengeful, insane, deluded nonsense. <laughs> and petty, too. Well, yeah. One, one of the uh, biggest... By the way, would had to bounce because he was starving, poor thing. Ah, <laughs> poor thing. Well, we'll hopefully we'll see him next time. So, wait, does he count as a starving African then? <laughs> I guess he yes. Does. There you send go, everyone. Money. Yes, send money to me, and I will give one percent of it to our starving African friend. <laughs> and he'll give seven percent of it, or and he'll give thirty percent of it to Hamas, right? Oh fuck no! I'm capitalist. So I'm going to give it all to me. <laughs> he looked like a communist. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's called a char in charity. You take all the money, you give ninety nine percent of it to yourself, and then you t just give one percent to the f dirty little Africans, because that's how my a lot of these charities seem to act. It seems entirely reasonable to me. Left word, not ours, by the way. Indeed, because we think that the oh, Africans oh. are capable of having a culture. They are forced yeah. to. <laughs> also, I think the whole idea of uh, don giving the donated money to a actual charity is uh, super erogatory. Is that the word? Yes, it's super erogatory. Well, I mean, because you know that—that's the thing. You know, utilitarianism doesn't make a distinction between obligatory and super erogatory. <laughs> Uh, now, if you want to argue that immigration is bad, well, that just means you hate black people. Easy. See? Well, Simple well, rules. Trim, I can guarantee you that if we were to raise any money doing this, that I would ensure that it went to someone living below the poverty line. That's good. You? Yes. <laughs> uh so, hmm. before a second has to go graduate from uni or college or whatever they're calling it this week in America, cancel culture. Not good. And the comedians Dead. have finally decided to actually do something about it. Which is interesting. Not sad. 
sad. I mean, not sad that they're actually finally doing something about it. Oh, yeah, crazy. yeah, no, that's great, that's great. Based in shed pilled comedians. Well, because, never... you know, in, in a kingdom, the court jester was the only person who could mock the king. He is the only one who could speak the truth because he did so through humor. You know, if your king decapitates his court jester, that's when you n really know that you live under a tyrant. I say for a cancer culture, what you should do is like, basically never apologize, and then go hard at them. Hard as fuck, it always works. Well, it doesn't always work. It's There's never a guarantee. Should. Yep, just go straight back at them. We want an apology. I want you to go fuck yourself. How's that sound? No, no, don't even say that. See, I want an apology from you, and then and start giving reasons, and yeah. be as ridiculous as they are. Like, Matt, you have to match the craziness, right? When you're in a fight with someone, that's you know, if you, it doesn't matter if you're weaker than a guy. All that matters is if you're fucking crazier. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, true. Well, no that's one wants to thing. fight the crazy guy covered in his own feces. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's got nothing to lose, right? So you just got to be crazier than the crazy guy, and they're they're crazy already. But they're not they're not fucking brave. These people they're fucking cowards. And if you go hard at them, they will uh, they will back off, and they'll run hiding with their tail between their legs. <clears throat> Absolutely, they don't know what real conflict looks like because they've had everything given to them. Like yes. weak little things. I'm not going to finish that sentence with mm. what I wanted to say, but, uh, well, it's a pathetic creature. Indeed. Well, at, well, kind of another thing about cancel culture is that as a Christian, I believe in the virtues of reconciliation, which would be forgiveness and repentance. Now, kind of the problem, and both of those things are deeply important, but kind of the problem with cancel culture is that it is completely anti-forgiveness, and because any apology or sincere repentance is just used to beat the person over, a, over the head with an admission of guilt, even when somebody actually does something wrong, if they have any sense, they're not going to apologize for it, because they know what is actually being attempted is not a sincere attempt at reconciliation. So you get a bunch of people with no sense of forgiveness, and then a bunch of people who completely break or break away from any kind of social standards surrounding human behavior because they're like, okay, fuck it. Why would we conform to any kind of standard of civility or politeness when the standard has just become so twisted and warped? So kind of the moral basis of reconciliation within a society is completely destroyed by cancel culture. And that is a deeply unhealthy thing on the level of the character of the individuals and on just the constituent ability of a society to stay together and function. It is just deteriorative. Cancel well, culture <laughs> Cancel culture is cancer I was about to say. Also it's similar to just watching piranhas eating on a fucking animal in the water. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if they can get out, if they can get out of the water and get some air, they might get out of there. But if they just lay down and take it, they'll be slowly picked apart. It's an online yeah. struggle session, basically. I well, I should uh, probably bow out now. Uh, just kind of one last thing is that there is a person I remember who was canceled. Uh, I believe this was like. You know, some Jewish guy about uh, 2,000 years ago who said some things that were controversial to some people, and a mob got together and, you know, tried to cancel him. What was his name? Uh, Joshua Jesus, something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But yeah, uh, any 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 progressive Christian who argues in favor of cancel culture just needs to like seriously reflect on that. All right, well, I'm gonna go graduate, my lads. So I will talk yeah. to you guys. Congratulations, later. man. Yeah, congrats, man. Good job. Good night. Peace. <laughs> oh, I like that kid. He's a good boy.
he's good peoples and actually the guys in the comments sections really like him too we got a comment yesterday from captain mame who said second plague i absolutely love your impressions on lotus eaters yeah. oh we all do we all do. right <laughs> So one of the other things I wanted to ask you about, Liquid, was how are your kids coping with what's going on up in Canada? Uh, they're doing okay. Like, the schools are pretty much open. <clears throat> um, they've... It's not really... Because I, I'm okay with my kids going out and seeing their friends and stuff. The only problem is that a lot of the parents out there are kind of cocked, and they won't let their kids hang out with other kids. <clears throat> so that's kind of hard on them. But other than that, like, might, might have been doing okay because I give them lots of freedom. They can go do whatever the hell they want. I don't really care if they bring COVID home, you know, whatever. I, I've been waiting for it anyways. Um, so f for my kids, they seem to be pretty, uh, pretty resilient. But there's a lot of kids out there that are, uh, they've basically been inside for a year, you know. Like my, my son, he just goes out and rides his bike and... Um, does plays toy plays with stuff outside, you know, water guns and stuff. But a, a lot of kids out there, they've been kind of shut in for a year, and I, I think it's going to be pretty um, brutal socially. I, I don't know if there's going to be a comeback for a lot of people, but maybe that's good in the market because <laughs> the market of uh, sociability, my kids will be way far ahead of the other ones. I'm gonna look at a socially and intellectually stunted generation. No school, no social interactions. I mean, you think now it's bad with how people are afraid to contact each other? It's going to be so much worse. Well, I can speak to the importance of social interaction and learning social skills as the poor unfortunate bastard who's got autism and has a actual diagnosis, you fucking filthy leftists. <laughs> if you lack social skills, which develop primarily in... Ooh, let's say, the first 10 years of your life, uh, you are yeah. absolutely fucked when it comes to <clears throat> the workplace, social life. God help you if you want to ever find romance if you haven't developed social skills. And they're basically going to inflict an entire generation with all the worst parts of autism and none of the good, none of the good parts. That's a good way of looking at it. Basically. Like, these kids are legitimately going to suffer. But at least they're getting the votes they want. And we are all safe. Well, because I think it's safe. really... Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm just oh, making sorry. a bad joke. <laughs> I think it's actually really dysgenic, because if you think about how this whole thing has gone about, we've sacrificed children for the benefit of adults. Yeah. And not just adults. People the over the age of 80. Yeah. And uh, when I say sacrifice, I, I mean like... These, We've sacrificed these, their well-being for, for an extra year of life for some of the oldest in society. Yeah, unfortunately. And I don't know, I, I just don't understand how people look at the 99.99% survival rate and then think this is a serious problem. You know? I mean, it's a problem, but... Like, come oh, on. I, I, I do play. wonder how much of it is the fact that we're now getting to the point where nobody alive remembers things like polio. Yeah. And now that... COVID was as bad as the Black Death. Would, how would this... How would we react if, to if, that? If COVID was as bad as the Black Death... Everything they've done for COVID would be justified. Unfortunately, yes. it's not remotely that bad. Like, they are legitimately acting how they should act for a virus with a death rate of like 10 plus percent. And if we had a death rate of 10 plus percent, you wouldn't be need to force people to stay inside their homes under threat of imprisonment. People would be have to be forced to leave them. Yeah, they'd be poking you in the ass to get you to uh, to work and stuff. Yeah. Basically. And one thing that I heard someone say recently, and I wanted to strangle them 
fortunately for everyone's best interest that was over the internet, they said, there's no way we could have prepared for this. I'm sorry, but what the fuck kind of idiot thinks oh. that we couldn't have prepared for this? Swine flu, bird flu, SARS, MERS. Hello, you fucking idiots. I, I'm sorry, if a country can't prepare for COVID after SARS, MERS, swine flu, and all that other bullshit, then the entire fucking government should be thrown down and fucking dragged into the fire. Especially the pissing CDC. At the moment they go, oh, we weren't prepared for this. Well, clearly you've proven yourselves to be fucking useless. You should all be fired. Speaking of stupid, <laughs> downright retarded statements like that, we had one in Norway. I don't. I may have mentioned it before, but I'm not quite certain. Uh, our prime minister went on air and just said, uh, "We were prepared for a pandemic, not just this pandemic." Wow, well, a so you were hyper- prepared for a pandemic with let's be generous, zero point two percent death rate. You weren't prepared for that. The fuck were not you prepared all. for then? The common cold, I guess. Oh, barely. Barely. It's... I know I sound a bit old, but I, I just think, I mean, this disease, don't get me wrong, this disease is terrible for people over 80 or people who have uh, chronic lung diseases and shit like that. Or four or more who... comorbidities. Exactly. It's really dangerous for them, and the reason people excuse this, uh, the ex- rather sometimes extreme cases we go to, it's because we have to protect those people, not just the elderly, but uh, all these extreme uh, or downright stupid ways to try and control this whole thing is to like save everyone who can be saved. So uh, there's a moral argument behind it, but there's no. It's not. Reasonable... It's barely a good moral argument, though. They're basically going, yeah. no one should ever die of this disease, and th- that's so phenomenally stupid. I don't even know where to start with it. But it's very naive. I'm I'm going to yeah. rant more lightly, lightly this time, champ, about the stupidity okay. using the numbers from Queensland. So in Queensland. Specifically in the Greater Brisbane area, an area with over two and a half million people, in all of every time someone has had a case of the COVID that hasn't come from overseas, they've locked down two and a half, three million people. And how many people have died in Queensland, Trim? Seven. 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 A zero point zero zero. Four four death rate. Six hundred infections oh. since May last year. Well, that sounds completely reasonable, right, Liquid? Completely reasonable. Yeah, why not? Shut down the whole world, and then no one dies, no one moves, no one gets hurt. Exactly. Cyborg everyone immediately. Life support. Come on, iron lungs here and there. Well, and the best part is, being that it's such a phenomenally low number. I could bet I could go out and inf- find a. T- What's a good number? I reckon I could probably find 10 times as many people who have died from suicide since March 2020 than have died from COVID in Queensland. Yeah, here mm. during the here during COVID in uh, BC, the death rate from overdose doubled. Yep. Uh, for Robert Longshore over in the chat, seven with COVID, not of with. So, as far as we know, all seven of those could have died from other reasons. But let's be generous and say that all seven of them died of COVID. That still doesn't justify any of this shit. Yeah, no, for sure. One thing justifies it. One thing justifies it. Well, there's a reason for it, but I don't know about justification. Well, if you're a politician from Australia, it's a justification anyway, and I'm trying to see it from their point of view. And exactly, it's the oh, competence. Well, if the you want to see it from an Australian politician's point of view, I strongly recommend going outside and beating your head against a wall for half an hour. Hmm. Nice. I'm going to try that. Maybe I can go for Prime Minister down there. Do you have Prime Ministers down there? Yeah, we have Prime Ministers. 
And in Australia, we've got a reverse competency hierarchy. The dumbest person in the country, we make Prime Minister. Ooh, that's competition. Oh, yeah. It's just like in Canada, actually. In, in Canada, we elect um, decadency, you know? I think, actually, well, we've, we've elected decadency, so I'm thinking that maybe that's just a sign of the times, you know? Uh, like this idea that we can save everybody, you know, save all the kittens, save all the whores, you know. I don't know if we can, uh, I don't know how much longer our our social, our society could survive uh, with this sort of state of being, you know. I think it's doomed to uh, turn into like the fourth turning. Turning? Fourth turning? Yeah, the fourth turning is sort of like, you know, the, what's it called? The strong men create good times, ah, yes. good times oh, create yeah, weak that- men. Weak men create bad times. Bad times create strong men. You know. Yeah, we're, we're rapidly bad. getting close to the creating strong men part. I think we're actually yeah. in that right now. Oh, yeah. Really? I think I think we are seeing that, especially in America, with people starting to stand up against this nonsense. Yeah, I think like, no, no, I mean, you're at the sort of cutting edge of the strong men being created by hard times. Um, but it's still going to get much, much worse, and uh, of we're, in a, we're going to have to create a lot more strong men before yeah, things so change. It's going to get worse until we reach that critical mass of strong men to drag things back to sanity. You know that uh, Simpsons. You know that Simpsons episode men. with the. Oh, good. I just wanted to say when you say strong men, I just imagine you know the uh, those British strong men with those their weird whip <laughs> suits. It's like standing in <laughs> from the circuses and things. Yes, exactly. Most oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes, let's save society. <laughs> Sorry. Have you seen that uh, Simpsons episode where Chief Wiggum, he's uh, his tie is stuck in the hot dog machine. He's like, oh, this is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it, but it sounds like a good oh. one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we're in right now. Oh, boy. And uh, oh. I think I think it's going to be I think in the end we're going to be better off, but um, there's going to be a lot of suffering in the meantime. Uh, a lot of weak people are going to well, a lot of weak people are going to get picked off. That's why I think the SJWs are so um, st- uh, vehement right now. It's because they know they're on their death knocks. Uh, they're in their death rows and they're desperately trying to survive, but they're not. They know they're. I think maybe psychologically or. In a Jungian sense, they, they realize that they're weak and they're going to, um, unless they latch on to strong things, they're going to end up dying. And so their last sort of uh, desperate grasps from the drowning is to uh, try to wield the state as a weapon to keep themselves strong. But as they do that, they actually weaken the state and it becomes more susceptible to, say, we change. Saw that, we saw how that went in Soviet then in uh... 1940s uh, Germany now, didn't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, dear. Well, I think we're moving towards the end of tonight, so let's talk about something a bit more positive. Liquid, what do you get up to on your YouTube channel? I see you've got some interesting stuff. Oh, uh, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> oh, uh, well, we. Uh, I, I've, I've, I have done a couple of writings that I've put up there. I have some more I have to put up, but um, just sort of. Well, during COVID, you know, we spent a lot, at least at the beginning, I spent a lot of time inside because we didn't know how bad things were going to be. Um, and I wasn't at work because work was closed because of COVID. So, you know, I basically had like a free six week vacation. So anyways, I, I did some randos in my house, and then I also did some writing, and I put those up there on my uh, YouTube channel after a while. And we also do a uh, D&D stream every Sunday at uh, 4 p.m. UTC. Uh, so depending where you are, and there's, uh, there's me, um, there's uh, our DM is from Romania, Eat Sleep Troll. He's uh, a code mod with me on Sargon of Akkad Reddit. And then we have a couple of other guys, one from England, I think, one or two from the United States, and then a South African. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so we've been posting that oh. there. 
we're going to make our own. Like, I, it is, we was, we've been posting it to my channel just because I have it, but uh, we're probably going to end up making a separate channel just for the D&D &D streams. But uh, it's my first D&D &D game, I guess, and it's been, been a good time. Yeah, excellent. So, nice. guys that are listening in, if you're interested in any of that, there's a link to Liquid's channel down in the description. So, go check him out. Give, give him some love. Yeah, we're pretty chill on there. Um, we, don't, we don't have a lot of people that watch it, but, you know, we just do it for fun anyway, so. As yeah, we, we know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we, that, that's actually how we got started doing the podcast here we were all having fun talking to each other for hours on end and we're like hold on a second what if we just live stream this <laughs> yeah why not <laughs> well you know if you guys ever want to talk about like um i've put a i think i put a couple videos up about this sort of a philosophy political philosophy and stuff like that um if you ever want to have a chat about those i could you know we could do a stream like that too oh lovely Lovely, lovely, lovely. We will definitely. I'd love to into dig it. in. I'd love to dig into it and uh, maybe even argue or you know have to defend my point. I love having to defend myself. That's one of my favorite activities. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> well, I'll have to have a look at them and see if we can find a time that works for at least two of us, if not all three. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm usually good in the evenings, uh, my time. So I'm in Pacific. So. Uh, Anytime after 9 p.m. then, or, you know, I can try to work out other times as well. I just have to know ahead of time so I can schedule it. Excellent. Well, we've got you here in the Discord, so we will look into it. All right. Sounds uh, good. Was there anything you two would like to add before I start winding us up? Well, nothing else that uh, I would love to join a philosophy discussion, but also if anybody wants to talk about or discuss art, animation, or entertainment in general, I'll be up for that. I'm very passionate about things like that, especially the medium of animation and how things have just declined lately in story writing and such. Yeah, absolutely. And for the guys in chat, you, you're probably already aware because I recognize most of the names I've seen. We've got the Discord and the, most of the cast it pops in most days around this time on the general voice chat and so feel free to come and join us for a chat tell us what you think just have a chat in general we'd love to have you just to wind us up i'm going to do some shilling for some of the team's projects once again we've got our tenets the original poem by spoon which is linked down in the description check it out it is as of, so far the most popular thing that's come out of the solemns of chardelay so thanks to some excellent work promoting it on Spoon's part. We have Spoon's new essay, The Insidious Hand, The Road to Hell, which is an excellent read, and I strongly recommend checking it out. And of course, if you'd like the art you can see all over the stream, that is done by our good friend Trim here, and he is now open doing commissions on Ko-Fi, which is linked down in the description, so if you'd like your own avatar or something along those lines, hit him up. And of course, if you'd like to support me or the stream in general, there's some other links down in the description. But other than that, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to having you again next time. Thank you for making the time to see us, Liquid. It's been good to have you. And well, Thanks for having me. Yeah, hopefully we will do something like this again or some other project. We will look into it. Trim, as always, good to have you. And we will see you all Bing. next time. Thank you for joining us. This has been the Sultans of Chardelay, and good night. Hi, I hope you enjoyed this segment from the Sultans of Chardelay podcast. If you like this segment, please click like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out the full podcast in the description below.